Moving on. This year, it's my hope and belief that this year, 2021, should be the panacea for everyone's well-being, good fortune, luck, and blessings. With that, let me start today's meeting with our most important rule. You all know about Gandhiji's three monkeys, but we're going to do a slight iteration today, right? The monkey that closes his eyes, please don't do that. Please view everyone and ensure everyone can view you too. The monkey that closes his ears, definitely don't do that. You have to hear the meeting and evaluators, keep your hearing especially more sharp. But the last monkey, the one who closes his mouth, yeah, I think that a little bit we can do, speak when required, speak when spoken to, which means ensure that you are muted and you speak only when you're required and keep your videos on. Next thing, kindly refrain from speaking about sex, politics, and religion to ensure that we have a cordial meeting going forward. What do I have to share with you today? All I have to share with you today is the resolution that no matter what happens in this particular meeting, in this particular minute, in this particular day, and going forward for this particular year, make sure that you ensure that every minute you give it your best. Every minute is all that we have. The present is the only present that we possess. It's our greatest gift. The past is gone and the future is something that we cannot predict. So seize the moment and ensure that you have complete control over what you do this moment because today is what will decide your tomorrow. Taking this stands forward is an epitome of leadership, an epitome of benevolence. I'm talking about our president, none other than Ayapa Panachandra. Take, talking about leadership in general, I've seen many leaders throughout my life. Different leaders, as we all Toastmasters know, have different styles of leadership. Right? There is someone who leads with authority. There's someone who leads by example. There are people who lead having different strokes in the way they deal with people. What I personally have seen in Ayapa is leading by example. Not one person today, can I say for sure, actually shows the kind of initiative that Ayapa has taken in the last couple of, last couple of weeks and months. Not one person that I have seen today is able to connect so well with different audiences of different age groups other than him. Not one person have I seen so far who is able to bring in such dynamic energy to every meeting that we bring forth. So with that, with a loud, with a round, with a loud round of applause, let's welcome our very own president, Postmaster over to you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Shabri, for boosting up my energy and you know, with the, those positive thoughts. Thank you so much. My dear fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests, a very good evening to you, all of you. Welcome you all to this wonderful evening at Bangalore Toastmasters Club. With that positive note, I declare the meeting number 1253 open. Uh, may we have a secretary in charge, Toastmaster George, to present the minutes of the last minute, last meeting, please. Uh, so, uh, Ayapa, today uh, Priyanka will uh, present for last week. This week's, today's, okay. I'll be taking note. Sorry. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah, yes, Priyanka, sorry. No problem. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. I'm here to share the highlights of the previous meeting meeting number 1252. Last meeting was the first meeting of this year and the new term. The meeting started bang on time and was kick-started by our new Sajjan and Arm, Toastmaster Shabri Shankar, followed by our very own president who spoke about the importance of how we see things and accept the challenges of life as it is. The hawk eye of the previous meeting 
was our very own DTM Rajdeep Manwani, who evaluated the entire meeting and gave us innumerable valuable insights. The winner of the previous meeting, the best speaker goes to Toastmaster Varsha BM. The best table topic speaker goes to Toastmaster Sureka Jagdale. The best evaluator goes to Toastmaster CM Manjunats. The best tag role goes to Toastmaster Akhilesh. And the best role taker goes to DTM Rajdeep Manwani. Thank you. Over to you, Ayappa, Mr. President. Thank you, Toastmaster Priyanka. Dear members, uh, any amendments to the minutes, right? Looks like all are okay with the uh, minutes. With that note, I declare the minutes of the last meeting passed. Uh, we have many wonderful guests in our meeting today. On behalf of Bangalore Toastmasters Club, I take this privilege and honor to extend a warm welcome to all our guests here. Thank I you, request Ayapa. all to unmute and welcome our guests with a good round of applause. Thank you, guys. Dear guests, if any of you need any information with regards to our club or the joining formalities, please get in touch with your vice president membership, Toastmaster Hannah Victoria. How many of you have, you know, have the habit of complaining? This is not working. This is this has to be fixed. And because of this, my life is like this. Because of my education, my life is life is like this. Because of my environment, my life is like this. In one way or the other, we are all into this kind of habit, right? It happened around 18 years back when I was working with IBM. I had an opportunity to work with one of the prestigious, prestigious client, AT&T. As most of you know, uh, they are into telecom. And at one point, they monopolized the entire telecom industry. Here in IBM, we were into application development and maintenance. They had at and had the legacy systems, almost 20 to 30 years old. Every day they used to receive lakhs and lakhs of orders from the customers. In the process, they never used to delete the old orders or the orders which, which are not in use at all. Because of this, the system became very slow and customers were finding very difficult to place the new orders. And it became a very critical issue. And all of a sudden, they raised the complaint saying it has to be fixed immediately. And they wanted to clean up the system. It was not so easy because it, it involved around empty number of databases and all these orders were used in different applications. It is not just to delete the purge the database. A lot of process was involved before deleting that particular order. I was asked to take up this task. I was just three months old in this application, this project. I was clueless. I went and spoke to my manager. She said, I, we don't have any uh, document or any knowledge about this system. And only thing is you need to talk to the manager in the US, IBM US manager. I just you know, picked up the call and said, you know, it was around, uh, around five o'clock in the evening, our time. Even I think it was still sleeping. Uh, John, uh, this is what is happening because uh, we got a requirement saying that the, all the orders has to be purged and the, the unwanted orders has to be purged because of this, the system is getting slow. Then he said, I have a, why don't we can have it, we can set up a call at midnight, 12 o'clock. That is, you know, our time. And we, I, I was on the call and my manager also was there from India and we we're discussing and the call went almost for one hour. He explained the project very thoroughly and he told me what, he never told me what I need to do. But somehow I managed to get something out of the discussion. Meeting was going on and on. Finally asked John, John, you want me to write a script in C++ or Perl? He just paused for a while and said, Ayapa, let me tell you one thing. John is dead today. What do you do? I was shocked. What is the, what this guy is going to tell? I said, John, don't tell me that. I, let's be practical. 
So what are you going to do if I'm dead today? Then I said, then I need to find out a solution by myself. He said, you are hundred percent right. I don't want to keep complaining about there are no documents, there are no procedure, there are no right person to interact with, etc., etc., etc. I don't know what you're going to do. Your job is to just find a solution and start working on it. Brainstorm within yourself, and I'm sure you'll get it. That day, I got so angry and annoyed. I completed the task in two days, and. And the, the unit testing, you know, system testing, everything completed within two days, and we shipped the code into production within two days. You believe it or not, after this incident, this was a big eye opener in my life. He helped me to define the differentiation between the follower and the leader, where the one person uh, is, is find the fault, and the other one is going to find solutions. Here in Toastmasters as well. So it, it is a kind of, even the evaluators for that matter, it is not about the finding the faults. It's all about giving the right solution. If, if I say there is a mistake, there is an area of improvement, and it is in his hand to say that, okay, this is how it should be done. And this, this is the uh, one uh, the make the speaker make a, a better better communicator, better speaker. Most of the times we land up with just telling the uh, uh, area of improvement. So always this, it's better to stop finding the faults and we should work on the remedies. It could be our health itself. Many people say that, okay, I'm obese. I need to reduce my weight. I'm very thin. I need to put on my weight. But what are we going to work on it? That is very important. So let's take a pledge today saying that let's not complain about however we are, whatever we are. Let us work towards a solution. That is, that is what takes us to you know, longer in our life. With that note, to take this meeting further, we have one gentleman amongst us. He is into finance domain. Started accounting by profession. He's been with the Bangalore Toastmasters Club for the last three years. What I like about him, he is he is eager to work on his communication skills. Because he he one one sometime a few months back he told me I I am comfortable with talking to the the people who I'm comfortable with, but when I'm talking to strangers, I find it very difficult. This is one thing I really really need to work upon. But there are very few people identify what their problem is. So he is on his way to become a powerful speaker, powerful communicator. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to walk us through this evening, the MC of this evening, Toastmaster Nikhil Singhal. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, for this uh, wonderful words of introduction. And a very good evening to all my fellow Toastmaster and dear guests. Good evening. Good evening. Now, we are all set to witness an another exciting journey of this Friday get together. Let me again welcome you all to meeting number one, two, five, three. Are we ready? Yes. 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 Great. That's what I was looking for. Yes, yes. Thank you. Don't find a fault. Find a remedy. Henry Ford, one of the great captain of American industry, said this a decade ago. And as our president rightly said, it's teach us so much about a leadership philosophy, a difference between a follower and a leader. A follower will always look for problem, difficulties, and the shortcoming. But a leader, on the other hand, will look for solution, out-of-the-box thinking, and the way out from a problem. So, always be a leader, never be a follower. Don't focus on the problem, focus on the remedy. Let's, be, let's pledge today, be a panacea to all our difficulties and problems in life. Every day might not be good for you when you wake up till the time you go to sleep. But if you realize there is always something good in every day, 
let's stick to that good happy and the amazing part of the day feel grateful and happy about it and trust me your day and your life will change for forever when we start putting our focus and attention on what we can do instead of what we can't do then you automatically become a panacea to all your problem and difficulties in life let's take a pledge to be grateful and happy for the things which we have in our life with that thought with that thought let me uh, let me tell you a brief about toastmaster club toastmaster club is the brain child of ralph c smedley this gentleman was looking for a panacea to help the people with the problem regarding public speaking stage appearance organizing committee and meeting and this wonderful man come up with a solution to start a toastmaster club the very first official meeting of toastmaster club was in 1924 santa ana california and this was that moment till today we are enjoying and cherishing this toastmaster club and lakhs and millions of people has been benefited by this so let me have a huge round of applause for this man ralph c smedley it it it's rightly said when we think about something we are not doing this for just ourselves we try to create an aura or persona around us if you ever want to do something just do it because it will not just for you you will educate motivate inspire a lot of people around you the way ralph c smedley has changed the toastmaster club or the speaking sp skill of the people that way you can do multiple things even with the slightest of the action you will take on it might affect and motivate your relatives your friends your neighbor so just do it each and every toastmaster meeting has three segments one prepared speeches table topic and evaluation prepared speech segment is a segment where the toastmaster come with the prepared speeches in accordance with their project pathways guidelines and instruction the toastmaster has to come and deliver speech within a defined time frame how this segment help it help a toastmaster to develop their writing and delivering speech capabilities to make them a better speaker coming to a second segment which is table topic this is the most amazing and interesting segment of any table any toastmaster meeting this is a rapid fire round where a table topic master will give you a topic on the spot and a toastmaster or a dear guest has to speak about it on one minute this is the section this is the area where we're going to test your fast thinking abilities and interpersonal skill you have to be bang on it you cannot escape this so we watch out for this section and our last segment is evaluation the most beautiful and the section which has you must attend evaluation is a section where a seasoned and an experienced toastmaster will evaluate the entire meeting and will give us feedback on the basis of his experience and knowledge this segment is the segment where all of us will learn and grow from each of us experience and knowledge trust me uh, in a life you should always be thankful to a person who tell you your faults shortcoming and the areas to improve because it's very important to come out from a comfort zone to grow in life and if someone is telling you your shortcoming you should thank that person appreciate it and work on it the only way you can grow when you come out from your bed otherwise you are happily sleeping in your bed in a quilt okay now without further ado let me introduce you with today's big boss a mr general evaluator who will take us to us entire meeting today as a general evaluator we have someone who has won the award in a best humorous speech contest and an experienced toastmaster so ladies and gentlemen please put your hand together and welcome toastmaster shazi <laughs> toastmaster shazi now may i request Hi. you to please explain your roles and responsibilities for today's meeting 
thank you nikhil uh, it was much on nikhil uh, so today i am uh, your general evaluator for this meeting and i will be evaluating the whole meeting from uh, from beginning to end each and every aspect every speaker and every evaluation which is going on and as we always say evaluation is the breakfast for champions so i am going to serve you the breakfast today evening and uh, to support me in this role uh, we have the tag team and a listener so uh, i am very lucky to have three beautiful ladies today taking up the roles of uh, timer uh, our counter and uh, a grammarian and a very senior uh, toastmaster taking up the role as a listener so let me call upon them to explain those roles timer uh, toastmaster kirtana can you explain your roles good evening all as your timer today i am responsible for keeping the track of time okay? so prepare speeches with time 5 to 7 minutes as there are no ice breakers today all the speeches will be timed 5 to 7 minutes please note at 5 minutes i'll be showing the green card at 6 minutes i'll be showing the yellow card and at 7 minutes i'll be showing red card at uh, and there's a buffer of 30 seconds to wrap up the speech for evaluation 2 to 3 minutes at 2 minutes i'll be showing the green card 2 and a half minutes yellow card and 3 minutes red card for table topics please note 1 minutes 30 seconds per speech 1 minute i'll show the green card 1 minute 15 seconds the yellow Yellow card and one minute thirty seconds red card. I'll give you my report when I'm I'll be called by the general evaluator at the end of the meeting. Over to you, general evaluator. Thank you so much, Kirtana. That was a wonderful uh, explanation of your role. Now moving on, uh, we have uh, Toastmaster Nasneen, uh, our R counter today. Toastmaster Nasneen, can you explain yes. the role of an R counter? Good evening. Thank you, Toastmaster. Hello, Toastmasters, friends, and guests. My role as an R counter is to count the number of unnecessary sounds or repetitive words you use when you are speaking. Below words used as utterly crutches by anyone, for example, a, uh, um, a, uh, you know, I mean, will be counted. Words may be inappropriate interjections such as and, well, but, so, and, you know. these are fillers that would affect your effectiveness in delivering your speech at the end i'll present my report back to you toastmaster of the day thank you so thank much you. thank you nasneen uh, for that uh, wonderful explanation of your role uh, now moving on we have the grammarian today he is uh, this role is taken up by uh, uh, toastmaster varsha toastmaster varsha can you explain the role of a uh, grammarian um A warm welcome and good evening from Grammarian's desk. As a Grammarian, I'll be making note of good and incorrect usages of English language. Shall be reporting when called upon to do so towards the end of the meeting. Also, it's my core responsibility to introduce the word of the week, which is panacea, which means solution, which can be used as the following so education is the panacea for all the social levels and i would like to take immense pleasure in announcing that 35 toastmasters have already used word of the day which is which has made the history so far and requesting all the role takers to beat this number and do more with the word of the day over to you shaji generally valued thank you varsha for that uh, detailed explanation and uh, the explaining the word of the day and uh, congratulations for making it a history in the history of uh, bangalore toastmasters now we have the listener for today um, we have a very senior uh, toastmaster and he has been always a motivation for all of us toastmaster robinson uh, can you explain the role of the listener Thank you, Mr. Shaji. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. To Toastmasters education program is based on three pillars. They are better thinking, better speaking, and better listening. My role today is to listen to the to the role takers, note down 
important statements they made and help you to recall, recollect what they said. For example, one person already said, Gandhiji's three monkeys. Who recalls? Who made that statement? I Sabri. Sabri. Yeah, good, thank you. One more. An epitome of leadership. Who said? Mr. Nikhil. Shabri. 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 Thank you very much. And over to the general evaluator. Thank you, Toastmaster Robinson. You started much earlier than we expected, and your questions came much before we expected. I'm always in a hurry. That was, <laughs> that was an excellent way to start off. We, we know what the kind of questions we can expect at the end of the meeting. So with that, we are we have introduced our team and uh, uh, back to Toastmaster Nikhil uh, to continue the rest of the things. We will I'll come back after the at the end of the meeting and explain the rest of the evaluation to you. Thank you, General Evaluator. And we'll definitely look forward for your feedback and suggestion. And I'm sure it'll be worth noting. So let's everyone, it's time. And we move to our first segment, which is prepared speech. Before calling and introducing my first speaker, let me call upon stage to the evaluator for the first speech, a pure Bangalorean by heart who love coding, video game, and an engineer by profession. Toastmaster Hamdan, please put your hand together in welcoming Toastmaster Hamdan. Toastmaster, Toastmaster Hamdan, may I request you to please read the guideline for the speech? Yeah, sure. The speaker is attempting his third speech in level one of dynamic leadership. The speech is all about researching and presenting. The purpose of the speech is to learn or review basic research methods and present a well-organized, well-researched speech on a topic. Time allotted to the speech is five to seven minutes. Thank you, Toastmaster Hamdan. Yeah. Do, do you want to invest in Bitcoin or you still have Bitcoin in your head? The price, the way Bitcoin is going up and down from 10,000 to 40,000. Are you wondering and want to look for a solution and answer for all these questions? Then I guess the next speech is for you. Let's hear what PM Ashuta has to talk about Block it, block chain and cryptocurrency, whether it's a myth or the future. Please put your hand together and welcome our first speaker of the day, TM Achyuta. So here, a quick mic check before I start. Am I audible? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, uh, yeah. Good evening, Toastmasters and guests. It was early 2016 and I was a 16 year old with 10,000 rupees saved up. There were these two words which were making the rounds all over the internet. These words were cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Now, and so I thought, I sought my dad's help to invest in them. But my dad said, no, this is a, it's not a clever investment. It's like a bubble which is waiting to pop at any moment and any day now, this will all be gone. And so I was left with 10,000 rupees and disappointment. I didn't understand my dad's logic, but I felt I was right on some sort of a whim. Today, the price of Bitcoin is 25 lakh. And uh, yeah, so the moral of the story is, if you want investment advice, you know where to find me. Jokes apart, I didn't know what the technology was back then until very recently that is and so bitcoin and cryptocurrency now in order to explain cryptocurrency i will i will first tell like to explain the technology it uses which is blockchain so now the blockchain technology is it can be considered to be of two parts the block and the chain now a block is the data which has to be stored it can be any data and it also has another timestamp in it, which, which basically tracks whatever modifications are done to the data. And now a collection of those data, of those blocks make a chain. These, this chain is basically made up of a crypt, an encrypted, encrypted code called the hash code, okay? And so the, this hash, hash code can be thought of as a puzzle. Only when the puzzle is solved, that is uncoded, I mean decoded, can you move on from one block to the next? So that, that is basically blockchain. Now, what this means is in order for a person to, so 
Okay, now I, I'll talk about the features of a blockchain that is the feature, the main features of a blockchain are that it's decentralized and it is distributed. So what decentralized means is there is no single authority which has a say in what happens to the currency. And as such, any, any change which has to be brought about has to become through a majority consensus in the community. And distributed means that instead of everything being in one single server system, all the data being in one single server system, it is distributed among a network of systems over and these systems each have a copy of the blockchain or a copy of the part of the blockchain. Now this makes the system very secure because if a person has to change any anything in the blockchain, he has to go through the majority of the systems and change the, and the data in each of the system for the, for the change to be of any, to be reflected basically. And so, and not to mention the cryptographic hash, which, which is a puzzle by itself. And now I go over the applications of blockchain. So cryptocurrencies still remain, uh, remain one of the largest applications, but we'll get to that in a bit. The, the other, other interesting applications are that it's, it's been used in the Wall Street Journal basically, uh, I published an article about how a company called Everledger used blockchain technology in order to, with IBM's blo blockchain tracking system, in order to track the diamonds and uh, other such precious stones and make sure that they were ethically mined. Another use of this would be that it, it can be used to track food, food in, in the food industry, where basically it can track the date and place of origin of foods like perishable foods like meat, dairy, etc., and even possibly medicines. And in Monday's Deccan Herald paper, there was an article which talked about how the Karnataka government is going through the process to make blo blockchain, to make property registrations based on blockchain. Now to the major application, cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is basically the monetary implementation of blockchain. The definition of a cryptocurrency, according to Jan Lansky, who is a well-known researcher in the field, is a cryptocurrency is a system which meets one of all of these conditions. The system does not require a central authority. So like I said, it's decentralized. And the system keeps an overview of the cryptocurrency units and their ownership. And the system defines whether new cryptocurrency can be created and how they can be created. The system also tracks the ownership of the cryptocurrency and can prove it through the cryptographic hashes. And it obviously, since it's a currency, the system allows transactions to be performed from one user to another. Now, again, the term cryptocurrency received the limelight because of Bitcoin. But then today, there are loads of other cryptocurrencies out there, like Ethereum, Litecoin, etc. But not all of them are known for the right reasons. Although the, the currencies cannot be a safe store of value as an investment because of their volatility, the technology brought about it by it is very useful. Now, has anyone wondered why Bitcoin's price has been on the rise ever since 2016? Well, other, other than the fact that in 2017, there was a suspected artificial price inflation, the crypto, a cryptocurrency, gen, generally the cryptocurrency's algorithm defines in advance how cryptocurrency will be created and how, how much of it is created. And the algorithm for Bitcoin halves the creation rate of Bitcoin every successive year. Now, with similar demands and half the supply every successive year, and mainstream adoption of Bitcoin by large companies like Amazon, one can explain the price trends of Bitcoin over the past few years. To summarize everything in a sentence, we have blockchains, which are basically data blocks, which are linked together by the cryptographic hash codes, which are basically the puzzles which has to be solved to go from one block to the other. And then these are decentralized and distributed among many systems. Then there is 
cryptocurrency, which is a monetary application of blockchain. Well, with what I've with that and the previously discussed applications, I hope I answered the question in the title. I think that they they were and everyone would be using a very secure digital and completely online Indian rupee isn't very far off. And this this is the panacea to this is going to be blockchain. Thank you and over to you, Toastmaster. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Achyuta, for this wonderful speech. Please have a huge round of applause for our first speaker of the day. Frankly speaking, I'm not sure how many of you have invested in a Bitcoin in the past, but I am the one who surely missed the bus. For my folks who has invested in Bitcoin in the past and now sitting on a huge lot of money and don't know what to do with it, I have a solution for you. Our next evaluator owns a beautiful homestay in Chikmangalur. So next time you want to go to Chikmangalur, you know to whom to approach is Toastmaster Ellen who own an amazing homestay in Chikmangalur, which has won the best traveler choice award. So let's put together our hand and welcome our next evaluator, Toastmaster Ellen. Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, the speaker is going to be presenting his first speech from the evaluation and feedback from engaging humor pathway. Now the purpose of this project is for the member to present a speech on any topic, receive feedback and apply the feedback to the second speech that he presents. The purpose of this speech is for the member to present a speech and receive feedback from the evaluator. Uh, so best of luck to the speaker and over to you, Nikhil. Thank you, Toastmaster Ellen. Now, for my folks who has invested in Bitcoin, Toastmaster Ellen is the way. But for the folks who are still not invested in Bitcoin and still wondering, if they go with the thought, what PM Achyuta just explained, the next speaker is just right for you. Next speaker is PM Samdani, a speaker who has attended various roles and responsibilities at Banjara Toastmaster Club. This speaker has also successfully handled the speech craft program in the Bangalore, uh, in the Banjara Toastmaster Club. If you are still wondering about investment in a Bitcoin, then this speaker has a right speech for you with the title, Calculated Risk. Let's put your hand together and welcome our next speaker, TM Samdani, Toastmaster Samdani. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, for that wonderful introduction. A ship in harbor is safe, but that is not what the ship is built for, as said by Albert Einstein. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, good evening. Back in 2000, I had completed my engineering degree. During those days, there were two options to get a job. One, through a placement, and then your life would be easy. The second was, in case you don't get a job through your placement, then you have to put in additional effort and go through more struggle to find a job. I was on this path, option two. I had an engineering degree, but no job. So I had to hunt for job. I thought, in case if I do a course in Visual Basic and SQL, I would get a job. Hence, I enrolled into a course at SSI Institute and did a course for six months and did a project also. And still, I could not find a job. During those times, networking was at its peak. I thought, in case if I do a course in networking, I would get a job. I enrolled in at Aptech Institute in the networking course. And also this time, I ensured that I was also certified professional in networking. Now, I still could not get a job. I had almost spent 40,000 rupees in this one and a half years, which was almost 
the double the amount of money that I had spent in my engineering course. Because of these two failures, my confidence was broken. I was not knowing what to do. After a few days, my dear father came to me and said, Samdani, I would suggest you to do this digital signal processing course at Trains Varsity. The course costed almost 35,000 rupees. During those days, this amount was a huge amount as my father was going through a tough situations financially and he had other commitments. Looking at my two failures, I did not want to risk this 35,000 rupees. I thought he can use this money for his commitments. At another side, I also thought in case if I do this course and if I get a job, I can repay my father in just two months. What would you do if you were in my place? I thought for a while and took a risk and joined the course in digital signal processing at Crane Varsity at Damlur. This time again, I put in that additional effort. I completed the course, did a couple of many projects, but again, I could get a job at Wavelet Group Pune. And this is where my career started. After I gained my experience in IT professional, I came back to Bangalore and joined Tata Alexi. At Tata Alexi, I joined as a specialist and for almost six years, I did not get any promotion. In uh, March 2013, when my project was coming to an end, there was an, uh, there was an opportunity for a project manager role in a different domain that is in HMI domain. And I was in a digital signal processing domain. I, I wanted to take up that managerial role in HMI domain, which is different from my domain. And, but it was a big risk. In case if you fail, you would lose your job, you would lose your reputation. And there were a lot of other risks involved in that. But if I don't take that option, and if I stick to my own profession and put in or build my own expertise in digital signal processing, that was safe. And maybe next year I would get a promotion. So what would you do if you were in my place? Would you take that risk and change your domain and take up that managerial role? I did that. I did that and I again put in that uh, additional effort and after three years of struggle, we delivered the next generation infotainment project for Jaguar Land Rover. This was one of the biggest achievements in my career. Dear Toastmasters, whenever you are in such a situation where you have multiple options, I would suggest you to come up with advantages and disadvantages of, of all the options. Also check out what are your objectives, the emotional benefits, the financial benefits, and then take a calculated risk with minimal backup plan also. Life is inherently risky. There is only one thing that you should avoid, that is the risk of not doing anything. As Albert Einstein said, a ship in harbor is safe, but that's not what a ship is built for. Over to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Wow, a Toastmaster Samdani. Thank you very much for this amazing speech. Let's have a huge round of applause for our speaker, Toastmaster Samdani. We very rightly said, uh, Toastmaster Samdani, uh, in a life, uh, we get uh, many times a situation where we have to take calculated risk. If I talk about personally about me, 
there was a situation when I was ne in need of 50,000 rupees for my coaching program and my mom and dad were not having that money. So that's the time when you decide, uh, my dad asked me, Nikhil, are you really want to go for this program? If yes, I am going to borrow this money from my friend and give it to you. But this is a risk you are taking. Can you do it or not? But you rightly said, I think the biggest risk in life is not taking any risk. If you will take risk, you will definitely land somewhere. That's what I did. I took the risk and I'm here today. So thank you very much for this amazing and perfect speech, which again teaching us a lesson. Taking risk is very important in life, but yes, it has to be calculated. We should do our working and math behind it. Thank you to Osmasa Samdani once again for this wonderful speech. So we are going great so far. Let me take you through our, our next speaker. Before that, our next speaker, our next speaker is again a Bangalorean who is a lawyer, someone who loves cooking, reading, and meditating most of the time. Wow, that's meditating is something which I really want to do, but I'm not that good at it. <laughs> Before calling my next speaker, let me call his evaluator, Toastmaster Guru Prasad. Toastmaster Guru Prasad, may you please read the guidelines for the for the speech? Thank you very much, Nikhil. Good evening, Toastmasters, and Aaron in particular. Today, the speaker is attempting the level one project from dynamic leadership, research and evaluation, researching and presenting. The purpose statement of this project is for the member to, to learn or review basic research methods and present a well-organized, well-researched speech on any topic. Timer, please note, the time for this project is five to seven minutes. Thank you very much, over to Nikhil. Thank you, Toastmaster Guru Prasad. So without further ado, let me welcome now our next speaker, Toastmaster Aaron, with the speech title, The Naruto Selfie Path. Toastmaster Aaron, the stage is yours now. Thanks, Nikhil. Nikhil, there's one slide. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just... Sure if you don't mind. Yeah. 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 Uh, timer, please don't start as yet. Here we are. Okay, I, I'll start now. Thanks, thanks, Nikhil. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I'd like to start by asking you, how many of you all recognize the picture on your screen? Please give me a yes or a thumbs up. This is a very famous picture and it's led to big controversy and uh, legal disputes after that. I get one thumbs up. I can't see the entire screen for some reason. I can now. But how many of y'all recognize this picture? Okay, two. Okay, there are a few more, but not many. A few of all, a few of y'all, that's, that's great. What I wanna do is tell y'all the facts that led up to this picture and why it's so important. Because you see this picture led to a major controversy and almost a decade of legal dispute, right? Now, it all started with a British photographer named David Slater. And David Slater went to Indonesia. Could I request everyone to be on mute, please? Members, can you it, 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 it's just the picture that I need, not, no background music. So David Slater, being a British photographer, went to Indonesia. Now, in Indonesia, he went to this island called Sulawesi. Now, Sulawesi has these uh, animals that you see before you, they are called macaques. Now macaques are endangered species and they belong to the monkey or the, the ape family and they're a kind of orangutans. Now what David Slater, the, the photographer did was that he spent three days with these animals trying to understand their behavior and trying to understand the way they function and he got comfortable with them. Um, he set his photo, he set his photo, his, his, his camera rather on, on a tripod stand and for, for a certain amount of time, he left it unattended to. By now, on the second day, uh, these animals were comfortable with him and they were moving around. And it so happened that this one named Naruto went and clicked these pictures. What the pictures that you see in front of you, and Nikhil, you, know, you could take it down. I think everyone has seen it. Thank you. But the pictures that we see in front of us right now, what has been actually clicked by Naruto, the macaque, 
not by the photographer. Now, I'd like to ask you a simple question and think over it while I give you these facts. Who should own the rights in this picture? You see, there is a concept of copyright, right? Now, copyright is essentially ownership that we have over something that's written or a musical work or uh, a dramatic work. Or, or uh, for instance, if I write a poem, I would have copyright in it. Uh, the Bangalore Toastmasters Club newsletter, the copyright in that would belong to the club. Right? So copyright is essentially ownership over something written or something musical, a piece of work like this, like a photograph, for instance. Now, my question to you is that, and think over this while I give you facts, because I would like your opinion by the end of the speech, who should actually own the rights in these photographs that were taken, right? Should it be the macaque, Naruto? Should it be nobody? Because animals can't have rights like we do and hence it has to be in public domain and free for all. Should it be uh, the photographer, David Slater, because it was clicked with his camera? Or possibly four, should it belong, say, to a child, uh, I'm sorry, not a child, uh, an animal rights uh, organization like PETA? Now, let me tell you what happened after this. What happened after this, case number one. Now, David Slater published these photographs um, and he was licensing them because he claimed ownership in them. So he was licensing them. He published books, he put them in magazines, and he was getting a royalty out of it. But what Wiki Commons went and did, now Wiki Commons is a parent organization that runs Wikipedia, is that they went and published the photographs without his permission and without paying him anything. And they said, listen, this is in public domain. An animal can't have ownership over the pictures. You obviously don't have ownership over the pictures because you haven't clicked the pictures. Hence, this is free for all. It's in public domain. And Wiki, Wiki Commons went and published the pictures. Now this went to court. Um, David Slater, the photographer, obviously argued that he had the copyright. It's his efforts that went into it. He made the settings. He was there. It was with his equipment. Uh, and hence, he should have the ownership and the rights in the picture. Um, the court refused this. The court said that, listen, you have not clicked this and you have not created this work, right? Uh, it may be with your equipment, but you haven't created this. You haven't clicked the pictures. So they said, this has to be in public domain. Animals don't have rights. You are not the photographer of these pictures. And hence, this picture should be a free for all. It should belong to the public and anyone can do whatever they want with it. This happened in 2012. The picture was initially taken in 2011. A few years later, in 2015, PETA, which is People for Eth Ethical Treatment of Animals, they also filed a case uh, saying that the animal Naruto, the macaque, should have rights in it. Um, and they went on a next friend status. They, they were trying to represent the macaque in court, uh, in, in a US court. And they said that we are fighting for the animal's rights, hence give us ownership. And whatever royalty, whatever licensing fee that we get, we will contribute it uh, to, the, to the park in Indonesia for, to prevent endangerment of the species, uh, so on and so forth. David Slater said that, listen, the laws do not allow an animal to have rights. Animals are protected in certain cases ex um, against extinction, against endangerment in certain cases, slaughter, um, and things like that. But they don't have rights over property, over works, over photographs, over written works. They don't have the right to sue like you and I do. We can sue, we, and that we go to court and sue somebody that has infringed our rights or stolen our property, right? So David Slater argued this. The court was on his side and the court rejected Peter's arguments and they said that the, the photograph should not have an owner. It should be in public uh, domain and there cannot be a copyright for animals, right? And the US Copyright Office clarified this position and they said generally copyright and authorship should be for people or for legal corporations, not for animals. But friends, over the last decade, this has brought upon various questions which I'd like you to think about. And I'd like you to drop in your answer. Do you think the animal should own the rights? David Slater should own the rights? Or nobody should own the rights and be in public domain? Give me either one of these three. Either say macaque or Naruto, or tell me Slater, or tell me public domain. I would like to hear your thoughts because we live in a world today where there are legal issues, where there is controversy over many of these incidents. Right? For instance, you have new technology called artificial intelligence that today is creating art, it's creating music, it's creating poetry. But can a machine hold such rights? Right? This is something that I'd like your opinion on and I hope these facts help you in reaching a conclusion in your minds.
Thank you, and back to you, Toastmaster Nikhil. Thank you, Toastmaster Aaron. That was such a wonderful and knowledgeable speech. I was really amazed by your speech title initially, but now I know what was you talking about, and I definitely want to go and read about this in more detail. So I guess uh, the question you asked to everyone, I think we have most of the answer here, and uh, I think the more vote goes in favor of David Slater. But we have a slightly good vote also in name of public domain also. Yeah, it looks like most members are in favor of the photographer only. <laughs> yes, the picture. Thank you. Okay, great, great. That that was such an amazing speech. Uh, may may I have a huge round of applause for our uh, Toastmaster Aaron for such a wonderful speech. Great. So uh, moving to our uh, final speaker of the day, Toastmaster Abiram. He is an engineering graduate, love to travel and meet new people. Let me call upon stage our evaluator for Toastmaster Abiram. and this evaluator don't need any introduction at all he is a seasoned and experienced toastmaster and has a great sense of humor please welcome toastmaster sudipto who is an evaluator for toastmaster abiram toastmaster sudipto yes thank you nikhil the speaker is attempting a speech from the dynamic leadership path he is attempting project 3 from the level 1 uh, level 1 uh, manuals his theme is researching and presenting which is the same as the previous speaker uh, presented the speech on so i'm not going to read out the purpose statement back to thank you very much tm so the uh, toastmaster sudeep to now moving to my uh, final speaker of the day we learned about bitcoin we learned about how to take calculated risk and then a very different topic about copyrights from uh, toastmaster aaron now our final speaker is attempting a topic with the speech title six sense and i'm sure definitely we need this now after so much introduction and so so many detailed topic let's put your hand together and welcome our new speak welcome our uh, fine speaker of the day toastmaster abiram toastmaster abiram the stage is yours now on that eventful day a couple of years back I visited a bird sanctuary. On our way back, it was already late in the evening, and to make things worse, a road was closed, and we had to take a deviation. We blindly trusted Google Maps and drove through hundreds of twists and turns, passing through the remotest villages, only to end up at the very same place where we took that deviation. we had spent the whole day gazing at migratory birds that fly thousands of miles and come back to the same place year after year and here i was finding it so difficult to figure my way back home my dear fellow toastmasters and guests good evening that eventful day triggered so many questions in my mind how do birds figure their way back home how do they navigate thousands of miles so precisely avian migration is a natural miracle in every aspect migratory birds travel thousands of miles to find the best ecological conditions and habitats for feeding breeding and raising their young ones It, avian migration is totally beyond human understanding the bird that you see on your screen is a bar headed goose thousands of these birds visit the magadi bird sanctuary in gadag district of karnataka every year and you know where they come from they fly all the way from mongolia flying at an altitude of 7000 meters to cross the mighty himalayan mountain ranges Now here is a common cuckoo bird named Onon. The Wildlife Science and Conservation Center of Mongolia, with the help of a few ornithologists, carried out a study to track the migration of common cuckoo birds. With the help of a tiny solar-powered transmitter, they track the position of Onon for 15 months. 
on its way back home, Onan covered a distance of 5,000 kilometers over the vast Arabian Sea for five consecutive days without taking a single break to eat, sleep, or to rest. Or to rest. The thing that baffles me the most is Onan flies back and forth between the same breeding and feeding grounds at Mongolia and Africa every year. How does it navigate with such perfection? Well, there is no single right answer to this question. Some of the most convincing experiments in this area have been conducted by Dr. Stephen Emlin, a renowned professor at Cornell University. According to Dr. Emlin, different birds depend on different sources of information to navigate. For instance, some of the birds use the sun to navigate. They have an internal clock to know the exact time of the day, and therefore they know where the sun should be. Just by looking at the sun, they can figure out which direction they are headed. There are a few birds that depend on the stars and constellations and they migrate only in the night. Dr. Emblen conducted an experiment, an interesting experiment. He put a few birds in a huge planetarium and projected a starry sky. The next day, those birds started moving from north to south and this was expected. The next day, he, he rotated the projection by 90 degrees. That means the northern constellations were now found on the east. And guess what? The birds started migrating or started hopping from east to west, which clearly proves that those birds were looking at the northern constellations to achieve a sense of direction. There is another extremely complicated and interesting phenomena called magnetoreception that is observed in the migratory birds. I call it the sixth sense. Birds can sense the Earth's magnetic field. Wolfgang Wilschko and Roswith Wilschko of, um, of the Royal Society Journal conducted a study and they report their findings in that journal saying that a highly magnetosensitive protein called cryptochrome is present in the eyes, beaks, and the ears of a few migratory birds. And these proteins help the migratory birds to sense the weak magnetic field that is, that is there all around us. We all have learned in school that Earth behaves like a huge bar magnet. The magnetic lines of force originate at the South Pole and they merge back into the Earth at the North Pole. Also, the intensity of the magnetic field is maximum at the poles, the North and South Poles, and it gradually decreases when we reach the equator. Birds can sense the direction of the magnetic field and they can orient themselves in the correct direction Furthermore, they can also sense the varying intensity of the magnetic field and position themselves accordingly. Who would have thought that the Earth's magnetic field would turn out to be such an omnipresent source of navigational information for birds? All these studies help us understand that birds depend on various sources of information that are seemingly redundant, redundant to human beings some of which are known, and there are definitely more that are unknown. These studies and these findings make us question the very scope and limit of human knowledge. The next time you see a migratory bird chirping in your backyard, please spare a thought for the incredible journey that brought it there. What is seemingly straight, what is seemingly supernatural and magical for a human being is just another day in the life of a migratory bird that says, the globe is my world, the cloud is my kin, and I care not where the skies begin.
back to you toastmaster nikhil uh, thank you thank you toastmaster abhiram for such a wonderful uh, detailed speech please have a huge round of applause for our uh, fine speaker of the day so you you were very right about the sixth sense of the bird and i i believe uh, the god has blessed animals and the birds with the capability to do and see more as compared to humans that's how they can sense what is right and what is not right for them and i believe that's how these birds are migrating from one part of the country to the another part of the country through their sixth sense that's definitely awesome and good to learn and understand about it thank you very much for this thought with this we are closing our first segment with our wonderful speaker and evaluators now the voting link has been shared on your whatsapp group for the best uh, for the speaking uh, speeches now you can vote for your best speaker and the voting code is 4 through 3 2 1 the voting code for this for this is 4 3 2 1 and the link has been shared on your whatsapp group meanwhile everyone is voting let me start with our next segment a most interesting and a wonderful segment for this meeting here you won't get time to think about it you have to rely on your quick thinking abilities and we'll get you on the spot so let me let's put your hand together and help me welcoming today table table topic master janam today tip uh, mr janam is going to take us through the table topic Hello, hello everyone. Good evening. And hey, hi, Janam. Hello, sir. Happy New Year and good evening to everyone. So, uh, should I begin or uh, should I wait? No, Janam. You can you can begin. Meanwhile, uh, everyone will keep voting in the background. What, what is the voting code, please? Four, three, two, one. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I'll put I'll put this in the chat section also. Uh, Toastmaster Janam, you can start. Okay. So, welcome to the table topic session for this meeting. the the main thing is that is to be able to speak impromptu like uh, pra- uh speaking itself is quite hard and uh, practicing gives you that additional advantage of you know uh, practicing a speech before and gives you the additional advantage of removing nervousness however the main thing to be able to do is to think on the spot and to think to, to think clearly and that is what table topics is all about so my job today is that i have i have a list of topics which i will just name and as soon as i name the topic i will call out a speaker at random and the speaker will have to speak about it impromptu on the spot and so uh, each speaker will get about 1 minute and 30 seconds to speak so the intervals for the uh, for the for the green yellow and red cards should be uh, should should be 30 seconds then 1 minute and 1 minute and 30 seconds at 1 minute and 30 seconds you're supposed to stop speaking so uh, that 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 is the time limit uh, uh. time up please note that you will be giving what again uh, 30 seconds 1 minute and uh, 1 minute 30 seconds right and, uh, yeah and when you show the red card the speaker has to stop like if the speaker yeah. can't continue. okay and uh, so I, i shall and begin my i shall begin my table topic session today the first speaker i would like to call is uh, uh, abhay kothari and uh, the topic is be uh, be careful what you wish for you might just get it i repeat the topic is be careful what you wish for you might just get it abai kothari topic master fellow toastmasters and guests uh i think that uh, this happens a lot of time and uh, th- the the point about this is that you become what you wish for or you get what you wish for uh, because you send out energies into the universe and uh, the universe responds exactly just like how you want it to respond so a lot of times i think we find ourselves uh, sick before a certain day because we're always worried that oh what happens if i fall sick and that really manifests so we have to really be careful what we wish for but other times uh, um, what has happened is that you know you go to some place where you don't want to be uh, you know meet someone you want to be alone and you think about that uh, and some you you will somehow end up meeting someone or the other uh th- this also really happens a lot of times so um i think you have to really be careful what you uh, wish for uh, but the consequence part about this is that you also can wish for something good so for example i always uh, wished for wish that i had uh, uh you know uh, done uh, 
done something every weekend or you know something like this so whenever i think about this very really in advance my weekend really goes very well so uh, you can be really careful what you wish for if you're wishing something bad but if you're wishing for something good if you're wishing for something positive if you're wishing for someone's uh, uh, energies to be you know really great with you <laughs> or <laughs> i think that uh, you can you should not be really careful what you wish for if you're doing that but uh, if you're wishing bad things yeah definitely be careful what you wish for over to you i agree with abhay very well spoken that you know we should always wish for positive things and then there's no need to worry about what we wish for thank you abhay for your wonderful speech now moving on to the next table topic uh, i uh, always be kind because you do not know the battle the other person is fighting i'll repeat the topic again always be kind because you do not know the battle the other person is fighting and the speaker for this is uh, sure khana Yeah, always be kind because you don't know what the other person is fighting once a nurse came to came to the came to a counselor and said ma'am i'm fed up the doctors whom i'm dealing with are so rude to me they're so obnoxious that is very difficult to work with them i know i have a mother at home who's paralyzed and i do need the salary but i'm emotionally spent and mentally exhausted i can no hand no longer handle these doctors insults and uh, offensiveness that's when the counselor said to her don't the patients also shout at you aren't they rude to you don't they not cooperate with you no ma'am but then they are ill no that is why you know so i can definitely accept what they are doing then do you think the doctors are healthy do you think that anybody who shouts and yells and demeans you is healthy emotionally well uh, light went off in her head and she said no ma'am they are emotionally unwell so the next time the doctor when the doctor shouts at you all that you need to say is emotionally unwell and radiate compassion towards this person and there you are you can easily handle him and that's what she started to do and a couple of sessions later she came and said let the doctor say whatever they want to i just say emotionally unwell and i radiate kindness towards them and i am kind to myself as well over to table topic discussed thank you so much surekh khan I'm, i agree with you that radiating kindness always helps other people thank you so much so now i shall move on to my next topic the next topic is if you want to master something teach it i repeat if you want to master something teach it and the speaker for this is uh, toastmaster smita roshi uh topic master uh get toast masters and guests if you really want to master something teach it uh, well a uh, good topic for me because i'm a teacher and i teach mathematics and i think i totally totally agree with you the years before what i taught what i learned i really master it now and every time i hear a new question and uh and a new perspective of the same topic every year even though i teach the same topic i hear a new perspective a new way of uh doing the same old sum and and then i start looking at it in different angles and i really when i'm able to answer a child i master it also i master over the years while teaching i master how to get things into the mind of students i uh, when i teach i don't i just don't teach a uh, the a uh, sum i teach them how to think about it and as i am mastering i am also helping them mas- master the subject thank you thank you for the topic thank you so much ma'am nobody could have said this better thank you so much uh, so moving on to the next topic the next topic is we all aim to be fictional characters in a non fictional world i repeat we all aim to be a fictional characters in a non fictional world and the speaker for this is alok simha is alok simha there yeah hi tell me ma'am here all of us all of us want to leave a legacy behind all of us want to be legends so i don't think there is any uh, anything wrong with trying to be a 
with trying to be a fictional character in a non-fictional world because uh, each of us has a story each of us is a story what has happened what has happened in our lives so far what is going to happen in our lives uh, it is going to be a story that we are scripting every day what uh, what you were maybe 10 years ago is not what you are today and what you are today is not going to be what you are 10 years from now so each of us like i said are uh, scripting a story and each of us wants to be heroes in our own stories and uh, when we look at it from that perspective yes we are all fictional characters trying to be uh, trying to live our lives like a story trying to get some day fictionalized so that maybe if not today i mean what is what is fiction after all it is something that you read after generations people might remember your story after generations after 100 years and and that is where you want to remain a character that is etched in their mind so you either uh, do something really great that the world remembers you or you have a story which everybody is going to remember or you do something uh, within your family make your character stay alive and fresh in the in people's minds after you're dead and gone so yes each of us is trying to be a hero be create their own story and thus each of us is going to be a character in our own fiction we are trying to create fiction in the non fiction world i mean in a world that is non fiction of course back to you jenu thanks for the topic thank you so much alok i completely relate to the point about leaving a legacy behind very well spoken so the next speed the next speed the next topic is Uh, don't shoot the messenger i repeat the topic don't shoot the messenger and the speaker for this is lokesh is yeah is lokesh there hi yeah this is 1984 on, the, on on his regular round one of the security guard at one of the very famous nuclear reactor saw something green oozing out from the side of the reactor and this person said what do i do shall i go and inform my supervisor i remember last time i told him something he he shouted at me don't bring problem to me bring solutions to me i don't know what to do with this green stuff that is oozing out maybe i'll just leave it there the cleaning person will come and the person will clean this 12 hours later there was an explosion yes i am talking about chernobyl friends toastmasters my friends when we shoot the messenger we create a psychologically unsafe environment where people cannot express themselves our job is to see that we create an environment where people are able to speak out what they see what they feel what they think just because a person doesn't have a solution doesn't mean that we can ignore the problem we cannot shoot the messenger this one so over to mr table topic master thank you so much lokesh i completely agree by, by taking the example of chernobyl you truly have brought back some horrible memories of the tv show and of the incident itself and that is a it is a very good example of why we should not shoot the messenger thank you so much now moving on to the next speech uh, the topic is never leave your friends alone always disturb them never leave your friends alone always disturb them and the topic and the speaker for this is toastmaster rita saldhana is rita saldhana ma'am here yes uh, good evening toastmasters always trouble your friends yes yeah, that's the thing you've got a right to do so because friends are friends what are they for now even i have so many friends i, I when uh, sometimes when i'm just thinking of them and what to do i suddenly remember old things and i say yeah now let's go and trouble them i call them up i call them up and, uh, and they do not get angry with me and they enjoy my talking and my company means we are they are really your friends if they start grumbling and putting off their phones or switching it off means they definitely are not your friends so trouble your friends trouble your friends any time and all my friends are invited to trouble me even if it's midnight i don't mind talking to them i don't mind enjoying my past jokes especially with some of my young friends when i in my childhood i remember this little this girl and i we used to carry eggs in our pockets and run around 
dirty ourselves, come back home, get nice beatings from my mother. She's now somewhere in London, but she keeps calling me up at any time of the night and I enjoy it. And so do I do, I do the same thing. Over to you. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. It's very well spoken on friendship. We should always yeah. be in contact with our friends and I completely agree with that. And so now I move on to the next topic. The next topic is when the game is over, the king and the pawn go back into the same box. I repeat, when the game is over, the king and the pawn go back into the same box. And the speaker for this is Siraj Ur Rahman. Is Toastmaster Siraj here? Jainam, you can move it. Okay. Uh, so then uh, can, I, shall, I shall give the topic to someone else. I'll repeat the topic again. When the game is over, the king and the pawn go back into the same box. When the game is over, the king and the pawn go back into the same box. And for this, I would like to invite Sanjana to speak. Is Toastmaster Sanjana here? Sanjana, you can move. No, Jainam, I think you can move to another, new, another speaker. Okay, I'll give the topic again to someone else. Uh, I shall give this topic to Priyanka. Priyanka, is Priyanka here? Yes, Shainam. Could you just repeat the topic once? Yeah. When the game is over, this, the king and the pawn go back into the same box. Yes. We all like to play games. And when we are playing a game, always one like to be the master of the game and try to rule over the other. During this process, we kind of forget to involve everybody in the in the game or anything that we do, let it be a job or in, in your life, let it be anything. Because even a life is like a game, it's a challenge. So when someone tries to overrule the other, what happens is they forget that you're supposed to take others along with you because finally when you reach at the top, you will be alone. And when you fall from there, in the pretext, assuming that you are right and going, the, then things can actually shatter and break down for you. So what I feel is it is very important that you take people along with you because at the end, even though if one person goes ahead earlier and the other person takes a longer time, the person who takes a longer time would have understood the entire process much better than the person who tries to go ahead and would succeed in a, in a much better way than the person who in a rush, who is trying to dominate and try to be the king of the entire game or the entire life or who thinks who knows everything and tries to overrule everybody around them. Overruling somebody can kind of hurt the person or diminish the person's uh, what do you say, diminish the person's um, confidence. And when that, when you try to diminish someone's confidence, it one day or the other will hit back to you because at the end, we'll all reach to the same uh, road, same path. Over to you, Jainam. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Priyanka. I completely agree that in, for any successful uh, endeavor, teamwork is always essential. And you have highlighted that in your speech very well. I liked it very much. So now moving on to the next topic, I would then I would like to take, do the next topic as staying out of trouble is easier than getting out of trouble. Staying out of trouble is easier than getting out of trouble. And the speaker for this uh, would be Nicole Pinto. Is Toastmaster Nicole here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so can you repeat the topic again? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, staying out of trouble is easier than getting out of trouble. Okay. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Staying out of trouble is uh, definitely, I, I mean, I would say tougher than uh, getting out of trouble because um, growing up as the only child, I feel like I was always very mischievous and um, my parents would... Uh, were not as strict with me, but they would always later on, um, they were very like, I'm so sorry, I'm feeling really sick. I'm so sorry. And like, can I just, um, can I not answer this today? I'm so sorry. 
Uh, no problem. No problem. Okay, thank you. Okay. So then uh, I shall move on to the next topic. Uh, the topic is if you are being given a product for free, you are the product being sold. If you are gi being given a product for free, you are the product being sold. And for this, I would I would like Rashmita Pal, Postmaster Rashmita, Rashmita Pal to answer. Is she here? I'm sorry, Janam sir, I'm a guest. Um... Okay, uh, so do you want but, to speak? Sure, could you repeat the topic? It will be a nice opportunity. Okay, if you are being given a product for free, you are the product being sold. That's right. Being in the marketing field, uh, when we are trying to do a sampling, we do give out the products for free in the sense we need to understand what kind of target audience would react to a particular product. In that case, if I'm giving you a product sample for free, just to try it out, your word uh, about the product would act as my marketing tool to a m larger mass. And that is how I, I in, in, in the process of giving you a free sample, I'm actually using you as a product to reach out to an even larger audience. So that's how I, I uh, interpret the topic and that's my take on it. Uh, thank you so much, Ashmita. Being from the marketing field, uh, it really is like, there, there could be no more appropriate topic for you. So then, mm -hmm. uh, Moving on to the moving on to the final topic. Uh, moving on to the final topic, I would like to keep the topic as uh, one second. I would like to choose a nice topic. Yeah, I will keep a simple topic for the last one. Do your best and leave the rest. I'll repeat the topic. Do your best and leave the rest. And the last speaker is Dhruv Goyal. Uh, hello, uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So while preparing for anything, whether it's an exam or a presentation, various things can go wrong. You, are, uh, you have internet uh, technical issues. You feel, uh, you feel headaches during an exam. Anything can go wrong. Uh, even uh, the, uh, your uh, client who is sitting in front of you can walk out uh, in between. Anything can happen. So what shall we do in this case? Answer is simple. We do our best. We think of all the contingencies that we can possibly think of for, for the situation. And after doing so, there should be, I believe that no worry should be there regarding what is going to happen. If I try to uh, consider it, Gita has a very great uh, has a very great quote about this. I want to say, karma nibhadikaraste ma faleshu kadachana, which simply means do your duty with the best of your abilities and don't worry about the fruit or if if I can say the outcome of that uh, of that duty. Thank you and over to you, Jen. Thank you so much, Dhruv. I found your speech very good and I took I. I particularly like the emphasis on Bhagavad Gita with that line. It was very apt. Now, uh, moving on to the, uh, since we have one more, we, since we have time for one more speech, I shall give one more topic. And so the, the topic is, uh, if you don't watch news, you are uninformed. If you do watch the news, you are misinformed. I shall repeat the topic. If you don't watch news, you are uninformed. If you do watch news, you are misinformed. And for this, I would like Toastmaster George to or to, to, give, to give his views. Is Toastmaster George here? Uh, no, uh, I guess he has net issues and he's a role taker too. Oh, okay, okay. So then, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Then uh, would Raja, Toastmaster Rajana like to speak about it? Hello. 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 Uh, we can hear you. Should we? Should I repeat the topic? Yeah, yeah. Please, please, please repeat the topic. If you don't watch the news, you are uninformed. If you do watch the news, you are misinformed. Yeah, that's ob obviously true because now in the media, like we don't know. You, you, we go to office and work from like day in and day out, and we are not bothered about what is happening outside. But like 
if you think and if you go outside step out of your office it's all information and like if you don't watch news you don't get that information if you watch news you are confused wherein like you are in that dilemma whether to watch or not to watch so like yeah that is obviously what is happening because we have so many medias if you just want to watch a news like there are 10 10 news channels and we are confused they all say it is exclusive with us all the news channel says it is exclusive we don't know what is exclusive what is included and like it is all the juggle jugglery and like we get confused that's that's my opinion on that Oh, Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Rajana. I completely relate about your point about it being all confusing and every news channel trying to say that they are telling the truth. So, uh, very good speech, and uh, that was my last topic for the evening. I hope you all had fun, and thank you very much. Over to the Toastmaster Gudu. Thank you, Jainam, uh, for this uh, wonderful table topic session. Let's have a huge round of applause for our table topic master, Jainam. very very nice selection of topic and each and every toastmaster has prepared it so well and did did so great okay the the voting link has been shared on your whatsapp group and as i mentioned the voting code is 4321 4321 please vote for the speaker whose table topic you like the best okay so here we are ending our uh, second segment of today's meeting let's move forward with the evaluation segment the most important and interesting segment of today's meeting here we'll get the report card of what we did right what we missed what we need to take in care of where what are the areas where we can improve and work upon so without further ado let me hand over the stage to our general evaluator toastmaster shazi to take us through the evaluation process toastmaster shazi thank you thank you toastmaster nikhil uh, so uh, without much delay uh, let me straight away go to the meeting the meeting started well on time sharp at 6:30 that was excellent that is Uh, kind of uh, practice uh, for btmc i think and much before that around 6 o'clock uh, when we joined the meeting ayappa the president was uh, actively there greeting whoever is coming in and uh, priyanka also was there so everything was packed up uh, properly and there were some hiccups here and there but everything was under control before the meeting So that is an excellent work for the whole team so congratulations to all those people who were behind the scene before the meeting started including some of the evaluators were not there they changed one two three or even the third person came in but everything was taken without any flow so that was that was excellent then came shabari shabari came with uh, excellent uh, opening and uh, he actually uh, welcomed everybody in uh, all the possible uh, languages in south and uh, that was a very unique way of doing and uh, but if if i have to um, uh, suggest something to shabri shabri uh, when he asked a question so you would have uh, he asked a question uh, about uh, uh, what what some, uh, expecting some answer and some of the people gave an answer he could have stopped there instead of that he asked went on to ask a specific question to uh, uh, one person uh, and that could have avoided probably if it was it, there are two problems with that one is probably she would she would have got little embarrassed with the sudden question and second is that it creates a feeling probably for the rest of the people that why he asked the question only to one person so in that whatever was the good energy was there in that process i thought it gone a little down during that time uh, then uh, uh, he very well he handed over uh, to the president so overall uh, i would say shabri did a very good job uh, in, in the terms of opening and uh, handing over but in between he could have taken a little bit attention it would have been even better ayappa ayappa as usual was uh, uh, he has been our president and, and his commitment we have seen so he has been extraordinary good he started with his own experience of um, ibm and which was very clear like how uh, 
how we take up a responsibility, how we don't create, uh, report the problem or the solution. So this was, this was more because this kind of stories, uh, which is coming from his own area, his, his own life, that becomes a big plus because that is very unique for us to hear. Normally we listen to a lot of different kinds of stories, but this is very, very unique from his story. So one thing I wanted to suggest, um, Ayyappa, if you, when you are uh, uh, giving a story, you could have cut short that story a bit. So rather than going into the details of uh, like what was the order and then previous order was there, you could have just combined it together like, okay, there was a problem and then how to solve that problem. So which would have saved some a little bit of time. I think you took a little uh, excess time, which which in turn has put pressure on the TOD after that. So this is one one observation which I uh, wanted to suggest. But uh, otherwise, uh, I would say IAPA did an excellent job uh, as the president. Now, uh, after that came um, Toastmaster Nikhil. Uh, I will come back to Nikhil's uh, thing uh, once I complete the rest of the thing. So after uh, that, we started with the uh, prepared speeches. And the first speech was uh, by Toastmaster Achuda. It was evaluated by Toastmaster Hamdan. So I request Hamdan to, uh, Hamdan to give uh, his evaluation. And then I will suggest uh, my evaluation after that. Yes, sir. Toastmaster Hamdan. Yes, sir. So good evening, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests, and a special evening to Toastmaster Achyuta. Congratulations on finishing your third speech in level one of dynamic leadership. I love Bitcoin, but you know what? Uh, I, I actually believe that it's gonna rule in the future, but you know what? I loved your speech even more today. The way you, your speech was well researched and the way you explain such a difficult concept like a story was absolutely amazing. It was very interesting to listen to your speech and that was a job well done. Secondly, your speech was well structured. You explaining your story back in uh, like you explaining your introduction to Bitcoin back in 2016 to you explaining the basics of blockchain before explaining what is Bitcoin. Bitcoin was absolutely fantastic. And lastly, the way you summarize your uh, topic in the end was on the point as like you actually your topic had a lot of information and to keep it up, it was very well summarized in the end. To take your speech to another level, I would recommend you to, uh, it would have been better if you would have practiced it a little more so that it would have been more polished without any filler words. And secondly, uh, it would have been better if you are explaining your topic pictorically by the use of PPTs. That in that way, you could have explained your speech uh, better and people who are new to this concept could have actually understood it even more clearly. So that's it before concluding and before concluding, I actually am going to contact you soon to ask your help for me investing in Bitcoin. So that's it. Over to you, General Avanita. Thank you, Hamdan, for that uh, wonderful evaluation. Uh, uh, Achuda, I like that uh, topic very much. Uh, incidentally, uh, two days back, one of my old colleague who was with me in 2016 called me back and said that that time you asked me to buy Bitcoin, but I did not. And I regret now. So I'm not disclosing how much Bitcoin I own uh, now. Uh, but one thing on the speech, uh, if I have to uh, suggest, see, since, uh, Achita, you have given a detailed speech, but on uh, I think you have done a very good research also. But since this is a research and present project, you would have disclosed some of the uh, places where you are based your research on. So some of the findings or what, whether you have done on internet or some sites where you have so you could have even given that kind of uh, shared that information so that somebody wants to learn a little bit more on uh, Bitcoin could have gone to that size and that will be more affirming whatever facts you have uh, mentioned. So that is something which I would uh, suggest. Anyway, it was a very good speech, uh, uh, Achuta. Now moving on to the next speaker that he was evaluated by uh, 
uh, Toastmaster Alan. Uh, Alan, uh, can you uh, share your evaluation of uh, Toastmaster Samdani? Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, guests, and Mohammed Samdani in particular. Now, the purpose of the speech was for the speaker to present a speech, receive feedback, and apply it, apply that feedback to the second speech. Now, let's see how Samdani fared in that aspect. Now, one thing we just went through a well researched uh, topic, but one of the things that was very, very powerful for Samdani was the fact that he narrated a personal story. Now, what happens with the personal story is that it becomes extremely relatable to everyone who is listening to it. So what was your personal story about? It was about getting a job, right? And because it was a personal story, it was chronologically layered. And that is why it helped in the organization of your speech. So for that, that's a job well done. Now, one aspect is to make it relatable, but one is to add nuggets of genius. Like you had a statement which said, what would you do? Now, when you had that being told, when you said that to the audience, it didn't become your speech. It became everyone's speech everyone started relating to what they would do and relating it to their personal life, which I thought made the speech all the more powerful. Now, though I really loved your speech, there were certain things that I felt would have taken your speech to the next level. Now, for example, when you started your speech, you took it over from Nikhil. And the one thing that you said was, thank you, Nikhil. And then you started your speech. Now, my, I urge you next time, when you get your speech handed over from someone, just take a pause, start your speech. Because you said thank you, there was a lower energy level that you started off with, and it also proved as a distraction. Now, when you narrate relatable stories, one of the things that really help is voice modulation. I felt in that aspect, there could have been a little improvement. For example, what would you do is a lot more powerful with voice modulation. And of course, when you narrated the joy of getting a job, it's amazing when it's done with a smile and it adds a lot of tiny little layers to your speech. Having said that, you ended wonderfully by saying a ship in harbor is safe but that is not what ships are built for. All I want to tell you, Mohammed, is that if you incorporate all the feedback that has been provided to you, you will not just set sail, but you are all set to fly to greater heights. Best of luck for your future speeches. Over to the general evaluator. Thank you, Dustmaster Allen. That was a very well, uh, had a good take on his uh, speech and uh, your stick down to the very specifics of the, the speech and uh, you've completely well evaluated that you have not left any any point uh, unnoticed which i can actually highlight that was a uh, excellent uh, evaluation from uh, toastmaster allen now moving on we have toastmaster guru evaluating uh, toastmaster aaron's speech so request uh, toastmaster guru to share your evaluation Thank you very much, Shaji. Uh, and good evening, Toastmasters and uh, Aaron in particular. It's the title itself, the narrator selfie, it is very interesting. Even though the subject is disputed, however, you are undisputed as a speaker. Great attempt, great speech, Aaron. Well done. The speech will be remembered for the long time. I like the way you've conducted throughout and started with a questions. The speech revolved around law that is about copyrights, 
photography then animals and peta peta is not rajnikanth peta it is uh, ethical treatment for people for ethical, ethical treatment for animals you have engaged the audience throughout with your questions wonderful being you are the lawyer so you are you are master in engaging the audience with questions you have done that job wonderful i sometimes i felt like you are a superstar arguing in the court coming to the the subject the subject is little controversial and when we want to close the subject you have ended with again questions so if if you ask me you have done a great job you are confident you have mastered the law you you have you have done everything but still again being a lawyer you kept again the confusion in the audience giving asking a question to them you could have the topic is all about research and researching and presenting you could have given a possible best options to the people various in the various domains say for example how it is going to benefit the lawyers in the lawyer standpoint how it is going to benefit the photographers photographer standpoint and about the animals animals are consists of humans as well as the animals and about the organizations like peta or whatever it could be much better but overall i felt it is one of the best speech it will be remembered for long time wish you all the best aaron great job thank you very much over to sajid thank you thank you toastmaster guru thank you toastmaster guru guru so uh, thank you toastmaster guru uh, so uh, you talked about uh, lawyer standpoint but i suggest uh, you can uh, check your standpoint also because your light is coming from the back side so uh, next time uh, you can see that uh, light comes on your face so that we can all, all see you properly um as uh, guru said this was an excellent speech and uh, that speech was so so smooth it, it almost went like a storytelling very difficult to even find out a fault with that but if i have to if i had to suggest something which uh, adan can improve in the coming speeches that would be to again as i told in the earlier speech since this is a research and development and this is a research and present speech you could have given some links or what what where you have source what is the source of your information you could have shared that would have made more uh, uh, your speech look more reliable so this would have been uh, the only suggestion for me for, for you for this case and moving on the next speech next speech was by toastmaster abhiram and was evaluated by toastmaster sudipto Uh, Tosmas Sudipto, can you share your evaluation of uh, Tosmas Rabiram's speech? Yes. So research is about formalizing curiosity. And Tosmas Rabiram, with your research on the migration of birds, not only did you satiate your curiosity, you enlightened all of us uh, with a wonderfully crafted speech. There are. so many things i liked about your speech your opening when you mentioned you were lost after the visit to the bird sanctuary was intriguing for me and you went on to connect that beautifully to the body of your uh, body of the speech about navigation and, and the birds how do they know, how do they navigate full marks for that then you went on in detail about how the birds use either the sun or the earth magnetic field to navigate there are two things i want to applaud here one is the depth of your research on the on the birds navigation but more than that how to take that the depth in research and how to really simplify that for the audience and you went on to enhance that part of the speech with some very nice and clean slide very clean not too much words on that very easily uh, something you can connect and see easily i also hugely liked how you engage with the audience your body language your smile your eye contact and then your use of props again full marks for that so so what's the only nitpick i have with your speech 
so again my that's my i felt that the number of times you moved away from the lectern or you lost eye contact with the audience when you went to change the slides or to pick up the prop that that was very distracting for both me and i felt for the audience as well so i would advise the next time you need to change a slide please use a pointed device to change the slide and then what about picking up the prop right so when you went to pick up the prop you were like still talking about your speech so i would say that gave you the perfect opportunity to use a pause in your speech that would have both enhanced your speech and then again it gives you the time to go and pick up the uh, pick up the globe and then uh, then do your magic on that that's the devidama i thought it was a very well delivered speech and then i like the way where you ended very strongly with a beautiful couplet really looking forward to more speeches from you back to you generally valentine thank you thank you tosmaster sudipto for that detailed evaluation the small things which uh, uh, you have noticed especially i am sure uh, that will be helpful for abhiram to deliver a speech in a much better way so one of the thing which i liked about um, abhiram's uh, speech is that he has a proper setup at home i think he is uh, he has a setup like a youtuber he has a a green screen he has a white board where he has written btmc so these are my new things which he has taken care which normally uh, mo mo none of the other speakers i have seen taken and even i have not taken that kind of uh, uh, preparation that is a very good thing which we can also try doing that and uh, one suggestion if i have to give to abhiram is that you have a very good voice and uh, you you are a good presenter so you can use a more natural way the, the maybe the current topic needs some kind of a dramatization so you are used more of a uh, not your natural voice of you have modulated it in different way which may look little artificial in some other speeches so in your future speeches try to make it more natural use your natural way of speaking that will look it more closer to us when you speak now with that uh, we end the uh, all the uh, prepared speeches and then came uh, jainam kakra with the toss uh, table topics so jainam you have uh, selected very very good topics and uh, which made everybody think it was simple enough for everybody to attempt at the same time it was difficult enough to make them little off balance so that the best is come out of them so this is this is a very well prepared uh, topics and uh, one thing i should appreciate even for the last one minute you you found that okay one minute more is there you accommodated one more person also you taken uh, special care for uh, inviting a guest so this these are very good things uh, which uh, you have taken i think it's a well done uh, a well executed role by jaina but if you want to take care of one thing uh, which you would have noticed uh, during the session you uh, by mistake you have uh, called up uh, a person uh, who is already a role taker so this uh, could be avoided if uh, then it would have been much better your role was well taken and the speeches uh, abhay uh, did a very good connect and then he brought in uh, abhay brought in universal energy to and what should be keep, uh, careful for i think next time we go close to abai i think we should uh, worry about the universal energy which is going to transfer and uh, sulekha you have done a very good uh, connect with that and the straight away went with the uh, nurse story so that was excellent we could, we could very well connect with that smita it was your topic only though as a teacher you connected with that topic and then maths i think it is your uh, favorite topic and uh, this is something which i always tell to my kids also that if you want to learn something you have to or you want to master something you have to teach so that was well taken um alok uh, yes always uh, you have done uh, that fictional character part lokesh uh, excellent uh, take on nuclear uh, reactor and then that actually got me confused like whether i should say tomorrow that whether i should tell to my uh, teammates whether uh, uh, always tell them to okay don't come with the problem but come with the solution so there is a risk involved that is a big 
heads up for me also so that's well take good take on that rita is rita has shared as a very good uh, method or a tool to evaluate whether somebody is a friend or not so you can just call them at midnight and see whether they like it or not priyanka yes uh, priyanka always uh, has been uh, i think it is her style uh, taking people along and then she uh, she well connected that uh, with the uh, topic nicole yes uh, uh, nicole was not well so that was fine uh, he could not do that so this also we could have uh, um, informed earlier so that we could have avoided that she could leave halfway and asmita the guest so she i think it is her first speech but in spite of that uh, she has taken a very good uh, pitch on the product part i think she is from a marketing or a sales background only that's why she could take it very well and uh, dhruv uh, that was a beautiful way to end the table topics with a quote from geeta and he specifically taken that geeta quote and ended uh so then then came the surprise of one minute and that was for the agenda for news and that is the best thing after this when we go back to watch the news that will be a reminder for us whether we watch it for uh, uh uninform or disinform so this is this is this is well done i think uh, uh, the table topic master taken it very well and now coming to the tag team so timer can you give uh, your uh, report on this uh good evening dear toastmasters and guests once again uh, the meeting started sharp at 6:30 as toastmaster shaji told and uh, since it's already 8:27 right now i'll just be briefing up all the timings and i'll be giving a detailed speech in the whatsapp group later uh everybody the role takers have taken all the have managed the time properly the speakers toastmaster achuta short out of time just 15 seconds more evaluators toastmaster alan short out of time 10 seconds and in table topics toastmaster abhay just took 10 seconds extra and everybody else all the role takers all the speakers and everybody who spoke was in time thank you over to you generally valued thank you kirtana uh, toastmaster uh, nasni toastmaster yes. shanti just one second yes. sorry to interrupt uh, this is just a gentle reminder the voting link for uh, table topics has been put on the whatsapp group uh, the pin is 4321 kindly vote. okay 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 thank you toastmaster Hello, Toastmasters and guests. Here is my our counter report. Um, TM Achuta, he he took uh, he the pauses were hours were around eight, and the pause was there was one pause, and he used the word and in a sentence repeatedly. Uh, Toastmaster Mohammedin Samdani. two long pause pauses and repeated the word and in the sentence more than once aaron uh, toastmaster aaron had nine um pauses i mean uh, as and also and he used the sentence in, in a sentence more than once uh, toastmaster abiram no repetition of words just to uh, pause uh, uh, as he had definitely and uh, toastmaster Al- alan uh, adahana he had just one then toastmaster sudeep to had four toastmaster guru had two as to and with the topic table topic session toast the guest had three to table Uh, toastmaster abhay kotari had four uh, toastmaster surekha had zero good dose to you ma'am toastmaster smita had seven toastmaster alok had five toastmaster lokesh had one toastmaster rita das had two toastmaster priyanka had five toastmaster nicole discontinued her speech 
um, speech. And uh, the gender evaluator had 10 hours and the Toastmaster of the day, that is Toastmaster Nikhil, he had five. And the last but not the least, our president, Mr. Ayappa, had four. This was my report for, from my side. Good job. The others did not have any uh, as or any pauses or anything. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Nasni. That uh, make, puts me pressure that I have to avoid any more as. <laughs> okay, going, moving on, uh, we will... Uh, request TM Varsha, Toastmaster Varsha, uh, grammarian, to give her report. Well, the English teacher is back as a panacea for all language-related problems. I noticed that the word of the day was used by Shabri and Achyuta. A couple of good usages that I've made a note of. Toastmasters is a brainchild of Ralph C. Smedley, epitome of leadership. Migrating bird ch chirping in your backyard, emotionally and well. If you want to master something, teach it. And I made um, a couple of not so good usages as well. One of the clients uh, could have been one of the clients, as said by, uh, should have been uh, used as, as quoted by. Again, one of the guards is the correct usage, not one of the guards. I love your speech even more today. Uh, the right way of putting it across is I loved your speech the most today. To take your speech to another level could have been to take your speech to the next level. Uh, I have more, but due to the time constraints, that is it from my end. Back to the general evaluator. Signing off, English teacher. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Varsha. Uh, moving, quickly moving on to the listener, Toastmaster Robinson, sir. Thank you, Mr. Saji. Fellow Toastmasters, please help me to recollect those excellent phrases. Every minute you give your best. Who said it? Every minute you give your best. Shabari during it, when he opened the meeting. Hawkeye of our previous meeting. I repeat, Hawkeye of our previous meeting. Uh, Toastmaster Priyanka. Yeah, right. Who said it? Who's name? Nikhil. 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 <laughs> Congratulations, Nikhil. If it was a... Toastmaster Priyanka. Yeah, Priyanka said it. Yeah. And remembered by Nikhil. Still, ladies object to Nikhil. One person said, tiny little layers. Tiny little layers. Beautiful phrase, according to me. Mr. Alan Arana. Alan, Alan Arana in his evaluation. Master of the game. Master of the game. Priyanka. Yes. What you are going to do yes. if I'm yes. dead? Priyanka, right. What you are going to do if I'm dead today? Who said it? Toastmaster. Yeah, good, good. Yes, sir. Two person remember it. Let us take a pledge today. Let us take a pledge today. The Toastmaster of the day. I mean, no, Shabri, no, Shabri, Shabri, Shabri. No, Shabri. No, no. Let's take a pledge today. Come on, come on. Toastmaster Hamdan. No, Samdhan. no, one more chance. No, one more chance. Toastmaster Nikhil. Toastmaster Nikhil. Toastmaster Nikhil. It's our president. He asked us, let us take a pledge today. Life is inherently risky. Life is inherently risky. Samdani. 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 Samdani.
don't find a fault find the remedy <laughs> toast master i pa no no don't find a fault find the remedy mohammad uh, samdani and toast master nikhil and nikhil toast master nikhil or sir i'll say henry ford <laughs> no no he got it he got it yeah 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 feeding breeding and raising abirama 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 good abirama. good yeah about birds emotionally spent mentally exhausted master sureka emotionally sureka spent was master sureka yeah madam sureka yes 10000 rupees saved Thank you very much, vote general evaluator. Thanks a lot for your for evincing so much interest in these phrases and helping me out. Thank you, Toastmaster yes, thank you, uh, Robinson. Now, coming back to the Toastmaster of the day, uh, Nikhil. Toastmaster of the day is actually the panacea for all the hiccups to control, and uh, Shaji, he did sorry. it very well. Shaji, sorry to interrupt. Can you please uh -huh. announce the voting link so that let them finish. Sorry, could you please announce the voting link for the tag team and the uh, goal taker? Okay, okay, one minute. Okay, then you can continue. So the vote, voting link is uh, shared in the WhatsApp group, and the uh, code oh, code good. remains same four three two one. Yes, correct. Voting code, code remains same. Two, code remains same four three two one. So can just quickly vote. Thirty seconds. Okay. Hope you have done the voting part. Now moving on to Nikhil. Toastmaster Nikhil, you had a very good opening. Uh, you were very, well, very relaxed, and uh, you could actually connect even from speeches to from topic to topic. You could connect very well, especially when you connected the cryptocurrency to risk taking, and then the um, uh, next evaluators' uh, home hometown and uh, what's business. It was very well connected, and uh, you. you carried the meeting in a very excellent excellent way and uh, i think uh, uh, the whole uh, area you you are naturally a pleasant person so that pleasantness was visible throughout the meeting now if i have to uh, give you some suggestions on uh, where we could have improved it so when the stage was handed over to you i think there was a kind of pressure on you for the time part because it was get, little get, getting delay and you would try to catch up that in the process what happened um, in the what when you shared the voting link you continued to speak and even you asked uh, the table topic master to start off even when the people were not ready uh, or they have not completed this uh, their voting so this is something which you could have avoided so which would have made people listen to whatever you uh, we were talking during that time otherwise when people are into something and then they cannot do a multitasking and then we may lose what we wanted to convey apart from that i think uh, you have done a wonderful job and i think you are doing it for the first time in uh, btmc so it is an excellent job which is done and only hiccup what i found whether i don't know whether it is my side or from your side your um, signal strength was uh, probably less and sometimes uh, your uh, uh, frames were freezing so apart from that it was a fluent flow of uh, as a dmod and i loved the way you carried the meeting so with that i conclude uh, my evaluation for the meeting and thank you all the all my team tag team and uh, 
wonderful evaluators back to you toastmaster nikhil tm audi thank you general evaluator for this wonderful evaluation process now let's always look for a silver lining and let's find the sunny side of life then we will become a panacea to all our problem and worries with this thought let me hand over the stage to mr president for his closing remark thank you so much to master nikhil for walking us through the entire meeting let us unmute and give ourselves a toast to mr gurudev my boss let us give a big round of applause to our g shaji all the speakers evaluators and tag team couple of announcements we are going to have a physical meeting on 29th of this month we are planning to have at least one or two physical meetings in a month we share the registra registration link soon we are, we are restricting the attendance to 35 to 40 second uh, second one we are going to start in person speech craft program tentatively in the month of february somewhere in the fag end of february next week we are going to have a fantastic education session on how to craft and deliver your speeches it will be conducted by uh, the champion of public speaking distinguished toastmaster deepak jaisin it's going to be a power pack session i'm sure you will be you will not miss that that's about the announcements uh, this week we have seen how our members were active on the whatsapp group thanks to the great initiative by our toastmaster varsha thank you so much varsha for that uh, toastmaster varsha made us understand that the word of the day is not just for that particular meeting but more we practice we get more hang of it this particular creativity is an eye opener for all the tag team members now time to anno uh, announce awards the best tag team player goes to toastmaster varsha best road table goes to toastmaster nikhil best table topic speaker goes to toastmaster dhruv goyal and toastmaster sureka best evaluator goes to toastmaster alan arana best speaker goes to toastmaster abirama congratulations to all the winners let's give all the winners a good round of applause that's it for this evening with that note i adjourn the meeting number 1 2 take care good weekend good night shubhratri thank you take care thank you have thank a you. Have a nice weekend